Chapter 31 Take a consultation token you are listening at novelfull.audio Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Gu Mengzhong was internally distressed when he asked this question, terrified of hearing an unfavorable answer. After all, he had heard such outcomes one too many times. Lin Jin smiled. Every pet beasts has a taming and blood-packed formation method, only. Halfway through, he stopped. Gu Mengzhong immediately tensed up upon hearing a possibility. He asked nervously, what idea? Say it. Lin Jin wanted to say, you can't have me do this for nothing. Money is still a need, or some form of token should be presented. After all, we're not related so I can't provide my services for free, dot however, the anxious Gu Mengzhong didn't consider this at all. Or rather, he was used to it. It was always other people asking him for favors. Even for beast appraisals, no matter which master he visited, the other party would be willing to serve him free of charge. But Lin Jin was clearly an oddball. Who cares if you're some calligraphy master? You still have to pay for a beast appraisal. Alas, Lin Jin could only give up and say, the association has its rules that I can't take up jobs outsides. I can tell you the method of taming and forming a blood pact with this guy, but you have to take a consultation token from the association in the afternoon. Lin Jin had said it with a straight face. After all, this was a normal request. However, Gu Mengzhong was stunned, before his aged face gradually turned red, finally understanding. To be blunt, he wasn't acquainted with Lin Jin. Having the younger man catch his escaping pet beast for him and give him a free evaluation was more than enough. If he goes on to ask about taming and contract methods, it was truly too much. Although Gu Mengzhong was anxious and impatient to find out, he was still a man of status. After some thought, he said, I have something to take care of today. I'll definitely head to the Beast Appraisal Association tomorrow to get your consultation token. I hope Appraiser Lin will be able to show me your guidance by then. Lin Jin mused, why is this man so dumb? Asking you to get a consultation token was just a figure of speech. If you give me a few hundred bucks, I'd do it for you now. However, he couldn't say that so Lin Jin only nodded. This ink monster. Lin Jin patted the solidified lump on the ink blob that looked like a head then placed the creature on the table. The ink monster didn't run but remained obediently in a solidified pile, squirming. Upon seeing this, Gu Mengzhong was once again stunned. He simply said, I don't have a container and I can't control it. I'll leave it with appraiser Lin and come get it after the appraisal tomorrow. Lin Jin nodded with a, sure. Just then, Master Chef Liao Gu came out with several dishes only to be startled by how Lin Jin and Gu Mengzhong were having a great conversation. He mumbled under his breath, they were just ignoring each other but why do they look so chummy now? Food's here. With his sensitive nose, Lin Jin could smell the fragrance from a mile. After half a day of talking, he was now starving. There were three meat dishes and two vegetable dishes. Each one of them a delicacy. Liao Gu wanted to hear Lin Jin's comments but it was impossible for the latter to give it. He could only talk about the meat dishes with information obtained from the museum. However, this instead made him seem wiser, especially to Liao Gu. He was so amazed by Lin Jin's knowledge in meat that he even learned a few things from Lin Jin's remarks. Gu Mengzhong was no longer hostile and the trio enjoyed friendly conversation. As if three strangers had suddenly come together and become great friends. After this meal, the three men were like old pals. In culinary arts, Liao Gu was invincible, in calligraphy, Gu Mengzhong was a master, as for beast appraisals, it took only one meal for Lin Jin to persuade both men of his capabilities, to the point of them feeling a hint of respect for the younger man. Whoever was more knowledgeable deserved respect regardless of age. Since they were now acquainted, Lin Jin pondered before telling Gu Mengzhong, generally speaking, just by gradually feeding the ink monster to tame it isn't enough. 
especially for rare creatures like this with high potential rates and battle prowess. But it also has a weakness, which is low intelligence, so regular taming methods don't work on it. Gu Mengzhong was a smart man. Her eyes immediately lit up. No wonder I couldn't tame it at all before. Should I have suppressed it with power? Lin Jin nodded. How shall I do that? Gu Mengzhong asked again. Lin Jin answered, this is a little tricky. Will Master Gu be able to obtain things like blood samples or fur from a level 4 fire elemental beast? Gu Mengzhong pinched his eyebrows together. I can, but it'll take a long time. Lin Jin shook his head. We can't let this thing drag on either. Forget it. I'll come up with something. You just have to look for me at the association tomorrow and I should be ready. I need to prepare these things overnight, otherwise, I could help you solve this now. At this, Gu Mengzhong realized that Lin Jin had other methods so he was obviously thrilled. He had been waiting for so long, hence, one more day was no problem at all. His attitude toward Lin Jin changed once more for the better. At times, it only took a little comparison between humans to realize their difference. For example, Jia Qian and Zhang He whom the association sent to receive him. While both individuals were respectful, they had no skills. Instead, being only respectful would make a person look down on them. Moreover, those two enjoyed gossiping about people, especially Zhang He. Up till here, Gu Mengzhong glanced at Lin Jin, musing, look at Lin Jin. He remains composed despite his reputation endangered and fears no rumors. While he's being ostracized, he holds to his values and only focuses on improving himself. A man of such a mentality was worthy of big things. If he can really help me tame and sign a blood pact with this ink monster, I have to assist him as well. He never said it out loud but Gu Mengzhong made a decision. If Gu Mengzhong only befriended Lin Jin because the young man had caliber, in Liao Gu's case, it was because of pure admiration. In his words, he took a liking to this young man. After their meal, Gu Mengzhong pondered before painting two drawings on the spot. One for Liao Gu, the other for Lin Jin. Lin Jin had wanted to be polite but Liao Gu suddenly said, Mengzhong's paintings are priceless. Even a simple painting could be worth at least a thousand or two. Some even go up to several thousand. At this, Lin Jin swiftly received the drawing. After that, they parted ways and Lin Jin returned to the association. He still had to stay at his consultation hall for the rest of the afternoon. Maybe now someone would take his consultation tokens. Inside the hall, Zhao Ying and Lu Xiaoyun were sitting in a corner, studying the evaluation report Lin Jin gave them. They even needed to flip through books about pet beast bloodlines for reference. Xiao Huo was still cultivating, but on the outside, it merely looked like it was napping. The sapphire turtle was well dot behaved, never moving an inch. Lin Jin went over to check on him and nodded. Truth be told, the large turtle had a powerful bloodline and great potential. Only Zhu Kin didn't know how to activate its bloodline. It was also thanks to the turtle having a thick shell and strong constitution. Otherwise, it would have died from poison long ago. Seeing Lin Jin approach, the large turtle poked its head out and nudged Lin Jin's hand, showing affection. All right, big guy. Just stay at my place for a few days. I'll bring Goldie here some other day so you guys can get to know each other. Become friends. Ignoring the fact if this sapphire turtle could understand him, Lin Jin nagged for a bit. Then, as if recalling something, he took out a wine gourd from his shirt. Of course, the wine gourd didn't contain liquor but Gu Mengzhong's ink monster. He placed the gourd in a cabinet then took out the drawing Gu Mengzhong gave him and put it on the table. Lin Jin planned to head to the market tomorrow, looking for buyers. Of course, he wasn't going to sell it. He just wanted to confirm how valuable this painting was. After taking a sip of tea, Lin Jin began waiting for clients to show up. However, things didn't get better. 
Besides the customers he had shamelessly dragged in this morning, no one took his consultation token at all. When Lin Jin was about to doze off, there was a sudden commotion outside, like someone was shouting and scolding. The sound got closer, and at that moment, Lin Jin's door was kicked open with the door instantly cracking. Then, a man marched in aggressively. Who is Lin Jin? Get out here. How dare he cheat my younger sister? If I don't teach him a lesson today, did he assume our Lu family is such a pushover? Chapter 32 Close the doors. Release the hound. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Lu Yunha, a member of Maple City's Friar Association In this world where possibilities of immortality had gone extinct, where the earth's spiritual energy was no longer suited for immortal cultivation, another option was now open to mankind. Blood Packs with Pet Beasts For over a millennium, this had become an orthodox practice that man was aware of. In this era, the difference between a friar from a regular person was that they practiced blood contracts. In other words, they raised the pet beast's levels and then absorbed the creature's powers. Pet beasts were only a medium for friars to take in the earth's spiritual energy. There were ten realms of the blood contract practice, where friars could obtain powers proportional to the realm level. For example, Lu Yunha who was known as a prodigy in the Friar Association had cultivated the blood contract he had with his pet beast up to level 4. Meaning to say, he could use 40% of his pet beast's powers. This process begun from inside the body, it was also considered a rebirth for the cultivator. Some friars could easily split large rocks open, jump 10 feet tall, possess unusual stamina, and could even control the five elements without pet beasts. Controlling flames and thunder, raising earthy walls, even breathing ice to name a few. Some people would say, since they already have pet beasts, what was the use of becoming stronger themselves? But sometimes, when pet beasts were evenly matched with their opponents, it was up to the owner's combat abilities and cultivation to settle a score. Some friars don't even need to rely on pet beasts to oppress other people's pet beasts. Such great strength was simply breathtaking. Maple City's Friar Association was a place to cultivate a blood contracts level. As an astounding member of the younger generation, Lu Yunha naturally had the resources to be arrogant. So when this pompous man heard how his younger sister, Lu Xiaoyun had been tricked by a piece of trash in the Beast Appraiser Association to betray Appraiser Gao Jiang and change her affiliation, Lu Yunha was enraged. Thus, he had come here with his pet beast to give Lin Jin trouble. Dot Lu Xiaoyun who was in the midst of research was startled by her brother's presence. She hurried over and asked, Brother, what are you doing? What am I doing? Xiaoyun, you've been tricked by this man. If appraiser Gao hadn't personally written to me, telling me the truth, I'd still be in the dark. Having said that, Lu Yunha looked up at Lin Jin who was just sitting there. Immediately knowing this was his target, Lu Yunha bellowed, You, don't you know your place? Who in the Beast Appraisal Association doesn't know that you're unskilled and even made a mistake in your evaluation? What rights does a person like you have to take in disciples and provide services? Before Lin Jin could speak, Lu Xiaoyun was the first to be upset. Her eyes turned red and she tugged her brother. Brother, you're talking nonsense. Learning from appraiser Lin was my decision. Oh dear, you don't know anything but you've come to cause trouble. Lu Yunha loved his sister dearly. When he saw tears in her eyes, he managed to suppress his fury and asked, Xiao Yun, don't lie to me. Did you really change the affiliation of your own accord? Lu Xiao Yun nodded. Lin Jin spoke up, I would never force anyone into doing something. However, Lu Yunha smirked. Then that makes you all the more despicable for bewitching someone into doing your deeds. Let me ask you, did you make my sister take my pellet furnace in secret? Pellet furnace. Lin Jin pondered and sure enough, it was Lu Xiaoyun who brought him her brother's pellet furnace so he could refine the six sun beast soul pill. 
However, Lin Jin didn't know she had done it in secret so he didn't deny this claim. Lu Yunha asked again, besides the pellet furnace, what did you take from my sister? Lin Jin was quite honest. And a beast soul. A level 1 prime fire beast soul. What? Lu Yunha was just trying to irk him, but who knew that he really got answers? He was so mad that his hair was standing on ends. You shameless fraudster. My sister was just naive to be deceived by you. I have to teach you a lesson today in the name of justice. Lu Yunha was in over his head in anger. No one could stop him. Lu Xiaoyun wanted to hold him back but she heard Lin Jin say, Xiaoyun, your brother has the same temper as you and wouldn't back down until he hits a wall. There's no need to persuade him. Go and close the doors. Lu Xiaoyun was stunned upon hearing this, frightened. Lu Yunha was sneering instead. Afraid of losing face when I beat you up. Xiaoyun, close the door. I'll show you the true colors of this wretched trickster today. Lu Yunha's pet beast was a lion, rarely found in Maple City. It roared at once, unleashing a mighty aura. Just like his owner, he was dominant and arrogant. Only, Lu Xiaoyun's reaction almost made Lu Yunha fall down. She rushed to Lin Jin and said, Appraiser Lin, my brother is just being impulsive. Please don't be angry. Give me some time and I can persuade him. What? With widened eyes, Lu Yunha suspected that he was hearing things. Why did it sound like she was begging Lin Jin to forgive him instead? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Lin Jin's answer was even more irritating. Xiao Yun, he won't listen to anything right now. Don't worry. He's your brother. And as your mentor, I'm considered an elder to him as well so I won't give him too much trouble. But the door has been damaged, it won't close properly, Lu Xiaoyun replied. Hang a curtain. We mustn't let outsiders enjoy watching us settle an internal conflict, Lin Jin said casually. Shut up. Lu Yunha was completely enraged. He was going mad. What is this? I'm a leading friar of my generation in the city's friar association. My blood contract cultivation level is at the fourth realm and my pet beast is level two. Even Gao Jiang would dare to challenge me so how dare this Lin brat underestimate me. If I don't beat you to a pulp today, I'm writing my name upside down. Crackling his knuckles, a resolute Lu Yunhu immediately cast a spell and his lion roared, pouncing at Lin Jin. His pet beast was of a wind attribute, raking up a tempest with its lightning speed, commanding a mighty aura. However, before it could reach Lin Jin, a silhouette blocked its way. It was Lin Jin's pet beast, Xiao Hua. A fire wolf beast. A lion is violent in nature. As the king of beasts, regular pet beasts would instantly fall into defeat. Lu Yunha looked confident. But what happened next made him swallow the rest of his words. A fire wolf beast one size smaller than his pet beast merely scratched him and the lion fell to the ground. What's going on? Lu Yunha thought his eyes were deceiving him. How could a mere fire wolf beast, such an average breed, defeat his level 2 lion? How is this anything but a joke? That's just an accident. Lu Yunha immediately decided. He knew that the fire wolf beast belonged to Lin Jin, and while he had absolute confidence in victory, Lu Yunha didn't relax but cast another spell instead. Thirst for blood. This was a blessing spell to sharply increase a pet beast's strength. Its usage was quite general in buffing up pet beasts. The lion was immediately enveloped in a crimson glow as if it was being painted by a layer of blood, making it visibly fiercer. The blessed lion let out a roar and then charged at the fire wolf beast. However, what countered it was still just one scratch. This single scratch from an evidently smaller foe seemed to carry immense power as the attack threw the lion back onto the ground. Impossible. Lu Yunha's heart was thumping madly. Reluctant to believe his eyes, he continued to unleash spells, twice in a row. Tempest Claw. 
Berserk. Both spells were his trump cards. Upon receiving these buffs, the lion's body grew larger and its eyes turned crimson, threatening to devour humans alive in its frenzied state. However, it was still defeated by the fire wolf beast with one scratch. I don't believe this. I won't believe this. As if his soul was drained, Lu Yunha wanted to unleash another spell but Lu Xiaoyun stopped him. Brother, that's enough. Can't you see that Lu Ba is crying? Chapter 33 Level 3 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Lu Ba possessed the blood of a tempest lion. Lu was Lu Yunha's surname and Ba was the name his owner gave him. After he heard Lu Xiaoyun, at a closer look, Lu Yunha realized that she was right. Lu Ba who had been scratched three times by the fire wolf beast lost its domineering aura. It currently looked like an aggrieved widow, staring fearfully at Xiao Hua with its large round eyes tearing up. Lu Yunha's body trembled and he almost fell to the ground. His mind was currently filled with question marks. How could this be? His lion was a level 2 beast, and after being blessed with thirst for blood and berserk, he should be invincible even against beasts of the same level. But such a powerful creature still lost. So overwhelmingly, and so quickly. It was too quick that even Lu Yunha had no idea what just happened. He didn't know, but Lin Jin did. It'd be a miracle if a level 2 could defeat a level 3. Moreover, Xiao Hua wasn't just a regular level 3. He had been promoted through perfect evolution and just earlier, Xiao Hua had finished cultivating Beast Energy Formation Part 1. This spell was specially designed and catered for pet beasts by the Museum of Deadly Beasts. In this world, possibly no other beast. Catered spells could compare to it. With this, Xiao Hua who just had his strength increased sharply could easily defeat a level 2 lion. There wasn't even a need to change his physical form. Lin Jin yawned. He got up and headed to the back of the hall. I'm going to take a nap. Don't disturb me. After that, he left to sleep. As for Lu Yunha, he would leave him to Lu Xiaoyun. Both siblings had similar personalities. Back then, Lu Xiaoyun had insisted on challenging him as well, so Lu Yunha was the same. And after this, he will come around eventually. Inside the consultation hall, Zhao Ying and her pet beast held up the broken door. With this destroyed, the hall was only covered by a large curtain. Meanwhile, Lu Yunha was dispirited. He was still reluctant to believe that he had lost to some wretched garbage. Moreover, his opponent was a beast appraiser not a member of the Friar Association. How could he lose to someone like this? Lu Yunha's confidence began to crumble. While Lu Xiaoyun blamed her brother for being rash, now wasn't the time to lecture him. Instead, she should be advising him in case he collapses mentally, and that would be troublesome. Brother, too many things have happened yesterday. I didn't have time to tell you so I just went ahead and switched over to Appraiser Lin. You mustn't listen to the blasphemous rumors out there. Appraiser Lin is truly skilled. You know about my pet beast, right? Take a look at it now. Lu Xiaoyun called for her red fox so Lu Yunha could look at it. After a glance, he seemed to have lost his voice. Level 2. What's going on? When did this red fox evolve? Wasn't it said that it was impossible for it to evolve within the year? Could it be? A thought came to mind and Lu Yunha's expression changed. Lu Xiaoyun nodded before dragging her brother into a corner to begin telling him what happened. This drama in the consultation hall came and went like the wind. Moreover, Zhao Ying had covered the entrance with a curtain in time so the people outside had no idea what happened here. Outside, Zhang He who was hiding among the crowd looked confused. Just now, he had seen an infuriated Lu Yunha bursting into the hall with his male lion, and then. Nothing. He couldn't see what went on inside and the noises around drowned out every sound from the premise. 
However, Zhang He had a feeling that Lin Jin was definitely screwed. Dot, he doesn't even know his place and even had the nerve to poach an apprentice of appraiser gals. Isn't he just asking for trouble? Lin Jin, appraiser gal can easily stomp you flat, Zhang He thought to himself. From Zhang He's point of view, it was probably normal for there to be no commotion inside. Who was Lu Yunha? He was a prominent figure in the Friar Association's younger generation. In a blink of an eye, he could effortlessly take down Lin Jin and the latter had probably fainted by now. It was only a pity that someone had put on curtains so Zhang he couldn't watch. He dared not enter either in fear of annoying Lu Yunha. A long while after, someone came out. It was Lu Yunha. Only, the man no longer looked as furious as before. He was much more composed now. His pet beast was following beside him with droopy ears. Lu Xiaoyun followed him out. Huh, Lu Yunha must be taking his sister away to apologize to appraiser gal. Oh Lin Jin, how will you ever show your face in public again? Zhang He was slapping his thigh in excitement. Only, Lu Yunha's subsequent behavior baffled him. Dear sister, I've been too rash and you know me. I was deceived by a letter and almost caused trouble here. It's only a pity that appraiser Lin is taking a nap now. I don't want to disturb him. When he wakes up later, you must tell him. Tell him that I'll treat him to a meal next time, Lu Yunhu said gently. Although his voice was soft, Zhang He heard the gist of it. What? He didn't want to disturb Lin Jin's nap. He even wanted to treat him to a meal. Was Lu Yunhe even awake? What nonsense was he spouting? Lu Xiaoyun nodded. Brother, it'll be fine. Appraiser Lin is not that petty, but you mustn't listen to those rumors again. Lu Yunhe looked embarrassed, then he recalled something. Right, I was the one who broke this door so I'll get a carpenter to fix it later. I'll pay for it. Also, there's another thing that I need your help with, dear sister. What is it? It's about Lu Ba. I'd like to have appraiser Lin take a look at him. At this, Zhang He began to lose his shit. Earlier that afternoon, Lin Jin had caused a commotion in Symphony Restaurant, and not only did he get away with it, but he even befriended Master Chef Liao. Then, he assumed that Lu Yunha would teach Lin Jin a lesson, easing his frustrations, but who knew that this ended as a failure too? Zhang He was at a loss of what to do. Meanwhile, Lu Xiaoyun agreed to it. It was just a beast appraisal so her brother only had to get a consultation token. By now, she had more or less figured Lin Jin out. Lu Yunha then whispered to his sister, Dear sister, be honest with me. Is appraiser Lin's fire wolf beast A a level 3? Lu Xiaoyun genuinely had no idea. Appraiser Lin never mentioned it, but both my red fox and Zhao Ying's pangolin couldn't even intimidate him so even if he wasn't, he should be close. At this, Lu Yunhe took a deep breath and clenched his fists. A glint flashed across his eyes. He was a friar who cultivated a blood contract realm. However, a pet beast's level was still the key to true strength. For the sake of his pet beast's evolution, Lu Yunha was willing to sacrifice anything. Yet, a promotion to level 3 from level 2 was terribly difficult. Even in Maple City's Friar Association, level 3 pet beasts were far and few between. Just the thought of a level 3 pet beast made him yearn deeply. Despite not getting a firm answer, Lu Yunha had a feeling that the fire wolf beast who could effortlessly defeat his lion wasn't a level 2. It must be at least a level 3. Lin Jin could evolve his pet beast into a level 3 so he must have a way to help Lu Yunhe too. At the thought of this, Lu Yunhe suddenly felt apprehensive. To think he foolishly came asking for trouble. Thankfully nothing severe happened, or he couldn't even begin to imagine the consequences. At the same time, he felt great anticipation. He had decided to get appraiser Lin to evaluate his pet beast. Looks like today won't do. I'll get a consultation token tomorrow. Chapter 34 
Hot Potato you are listening at NovelFull.audio Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Inside Appraiser Gao Zhang's Consultation Hall at the Beast Appraisal Association What? Gao Zhang rose from his chair and interrogated Zhang he who had come reporting to him, are your words true? Even Lu Yunhe couldn't do anything to Lin Jin. It's true. I saw it with my own eyes. Zhang he assured. Appraiser Gao, I feel frustrated too. Lu Yunhe had come aggressively, even kicking down the doors of Lin Jin's consultation hall. But I don't know what happened inside after that. When he came back out, not only was he not angry with Lin Jin, but he even addressed him as, Appraiser Lin. Even I'm baffled by this. Gao Jiang pondered before waving. It's nothing. Lu Yunhe is a rash and dumb man. He must have been deceived by Lin Jin's smooth dot talking. But persuasion can't compare to genuine skills. Lin Jin would spill the beans sooner or later. Zhang He felt that something was off but he didn't dare to say more. Zhang He, you used to be affiliated with Lin Jin so you know his capabilities best. If he was truly skillful, you'd have never switched mentors, isn't that right, said Gao Jiang. Zhang He quickly nodded, voicing his agreement. Perhaps it was this question that helped him regain his confidence. He was once Lin Jin's most trusted person. Having accompanied Lin Jin everywhere, Zhang He knew the man's capabilities best. To put it simply, the man was a mess. There was no doubt about it. Chief Wang Ji has presented a formal request to the board, requesting to revoke Lin Jin of his official beast appraiser title. The results should be out soon. When that time comes, this black sheep, Lin Jin will have to pack his bags and disappear, said Zhang He. Gao Zhang's eyes lit up. This was clearly confidential information. If this was true, Lin Jin's days were numbered. Just then, hurried footsteps sounded outside the door. Appraiser Gao Jiang, Chief Wang Ji is requesting an urgent audience with you. Inside the chief's consultation hall in the Beast Appraisal Association, the man with a tiny mustache, Wang Ji, was engaged in friendly conversation with an elderly man. Stewards Wa, you're just as vigorous as ever. Now that the city lord is holding you in high regard, when he rises to greater heights, you are sure to rise with him. Wang Ji held great regard for this older man. His name was Zuo Wentong. Having served the army as a lieutenant office during his younger days, he was now the main steward of Maple City City Lord, making him just number two in status within the city. Sitting beside Zuo Wentong was a rainbow tiger that was almost as tall as a human, bearing the aura of a mighty beast king. I'll be counting on your words, Chief Wang. I'm visiting you so abruptly because the city lord has dug up some century.old beast eggs this morning at a historical site. We require Chief Wang to evaluate them because you're the expert in this field after all. Despite his old age, Zuo Wentong was full of vigor and carried an overwhelming aura. He was talking about the tens of eggs laid before him. These eggs were all of different sizes with the largest being the size of melon while the smallest was comparable to a fist. As a ray of light shone on them, one could even vaguely see liquid moving inside. It was evident that the eggs were still alive. For the blood contracts of this world, if a blood pact was formed prior to the beast egg hatching, the level of this contract and the beast's potential would grow stronger. But obviously, one had to first evaluate what kind of beast the egg was. Some people would say that these weren't beast eggs due to their irregular appearances. Based on the exterior and some finer details, this declaration was agreeable. However, they were not regular beast eggs. As the chief of Maple City's Beast Appraisal Association, Wang Ji was naturally an experienced man. In the studies of beasts, with the presence of the five elements on earth, together with darkness and light, when infused with an egg, it would create a varied species. The sizes here are all different and it's hard to tell what's inside. Especially after they have absorbed the earth's spiritual energy and the moonlight's essence, with various energies mixed together. 
Stewards Wa, you've given me a tough assignment. While he spoke eloquently, Wang Ji was cussing in his mind. Mutated eggs like these are terribly hard to appraise and it's not like you don't know it either. But you brought it here anyway, asking me to appraise it. How should I do that? Aren't you just giving me a hard time? But Wang Ji could never say that because his guest represented Maple City's lord. Suo went on was an intelligent man. He chuckled and replied, exactly because it's hard that I could only look for you. You should know that the city lord does not plan to hold these mutated eggs exclusively. In a few days, it will be Prince Rong's birthday. The city lord plans to present the eggs as presents but we can't very well send them over just like that. They would only have value with an evaluation report. He simply stated the importance of this matter. To put it bluntly, I know it's difficult too, that's why I looked for you. Because you're the chief of Maple City's Beast Appraisal Association. Wang Ji chuckled in response but cursed madly on the inside. Nevertheless, he stood up and went over to observe. Perhaps he might just find traces of clues. He used beast talismans, activated seals, even brought out specialized tools for beast evaluations. After a while, Wang Ji's forehead was visibly covered in sweat. When Zuo went on took notice, he too was aware of how difficult this assignment was. However, he had important tasks to attend to so he couldn't possibly keep Wang Ji company as he appraised the eggs. Chief Wang, I'll leave these eleven mutated eggs here and come for them tomorrow morning. By then, you have to give me a result. I'm counting on you. Zuo went on was washing his hands off this matter while Wang Ji was cursing like a sailor on the inside. He had no choice. After seeing Zuo went on out, Wang Ji halted his consultation services for the day because this was evidently more important. However, he realized that his knowledge wasn't sufficient for this task. Wiping his sweat away, Wang Ji quickly sent for Gao Jian. His thoughts were simple. Even if he had to shoulder the responsibility, he shall not shoulder it alone. And so, Gao Jiang was summoned with great urgency. After clarifying the situation, Gao Jiang cursed inwardly old bastard. This was clearly a hot potato. Who doesn't know that mutated eggs were the most difficult to appraise? And the client needed to take them back the next day too. Wasn't he just toying with them? However, he had no choice. Gao Jiang couldn't escape when it was Wang Ji who dragged him in. After all, he was an official beast appraiser of the association. Go, bring me the holy indicative water. And the soul mirror too. Be careful. Wasting no more time, Wang Ji and Gao Jiang worked together. The difficulty level of this appraisal was fiendish. They could only give it their all and try their best. Both men had several rare tools and materials for beast appraisals. Dot for example, the holy indicative water was a precious material. Gao Jian only had a little bit and was forced to use it in this situation. Meanwhile, the soul mirror was Wang Ji's most valuable tool. This treasure was priceless. It was a present from his mentor many years ago. This tiny mirror could reflect intrinsic qualities, making it very useful in beast evaluations. Once the items were here, the men began their evaluations as they discussed information. Yet, by nightfall, they only managed to evaluate two out of eleven beast eggs. Even this was exhausting enough that both their foreheads were covered in sweat. Without a doubt, even if they didn't eat or sleep, it was impossible to evaluate the remaining nine mutated eggs by dawn tomorrow. This assignment was destined to fail. Although the city lord wouldn't punish them for this failure, he would definitely be displeased. And Maple City's city lord had influence over the general committee so Wang Ji was in a terrible mood because of this. Chief, we can't force this issue. Every beast appraiser knew that it's difficult to evaluate mutated eggs. This task requires time and experience. It's already difficult enough for us to evaluate too. At least we have something to show for, Gao Jiang comforted. 
After all, even if this is a failure, you, Chief Wang, will be bearing most of the responsibility. Wang Ji wiped the sweat on his forehead, his expression dark. Although that's true, we still didn't complete the job. If we could evaluate a few more, that would save us more face. Right, I'll put both our names on these two evaluation reports. Gao Jiang was cursing on the inside. If the evaluation was incorrect, he'd have to bear the responsibility too. But if it was correct, he could bask in the glory instead. However, attaining glory wasn't possible right now. After all, only evaluating 2 out of 11 was still a shameful outcome. Anyhow, let's not sought after merit but seek to be faultless, said Gao Jian. Then, he looked at the remaining mutated eggs. What about these then? We can't really hand them back without evaluation reports. Chapter 35 Make him a scapegoat you are listening at novelfull.audio Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Wang Ji naturally understood what Gao Jiang meant. Because it was truly shameful if word got out. Just then, Gao Jiang was reminded of today's incident about Lu Xiaoyun switching mentors. A sudden thought came to him and he said, Chief, we're not the only two official beast appraisers in this branch. Wang Ji's eyes lit up at this reminder. You're right. We're not the only two official beast appraisers in this branch. Someone. Move these to the main evaluation hall and summon Lin Jin. Lin Jin had a wonderful nap that afternoon because no one disturbed him. He only woke up in the evening. After having a bite to eat and some tea, he went to check on the sapphire turtle and ink monster. Lin Jin realized how relaxed his life was. Zhao Ying and Lu Xiaoyun had gone home as it got dark outside. Lin Jin was planning to go home too. He took out the drawing Gu Mengzhong had gifted to him from the book cabinet. Naturally, he couldn't leave such a valuable thing in the association and had to bring it home. With the scroll of drawing in hand, Lin Jin left with Xiao Hua. Just outside the threshold, he was stopped by the apprentice Wang Ji had sent for him. In the association's evaluation hall. When Lin Jin entered, Wang Ji and Gao Jiang were already there. The men were apathetic when they saw him while Wang Ji was utterly hostile. He wanted to revoke Lin Jin's title and chase him away so he could recommend Jia Qian to replace Lin Jin. At the thought of this enchanting fairy, Wang Ji felt a little hot and bothered. He even felt many years younger. While he hadn't obtained the beauty yet, but once this matter was settled, what was his would naturally be his. As for Gao Jiang, he initially only felt disdain for Lin Jin. But the man had brazenly poached his student and even questioned his appraisal. This made Gao Jiang greatly prejudiced against Lin Jin. Hence, both men definitely wouldn't be friendly to the newcomer. However, Lin Jin was quite calm and greeted them upon entrance. Chief Wang Appraiser Gao. Both men couldn't be bothered to respond. They had only called for him to be a scapegoat. Lin Jin, where are you so slow? When will you change this dilly dot dallying habit of yours? Wang Ji simply berated out of annoyance for Lin Jin. Dilly dot dallying, but Lin Jin had not delayed anything. He came immediately after he had been called. He hadn't even had time to place Gu Mengzhong's painting back home. I've called you here to assign you a task. Go and evaluate the nine beast eggs over there. Remember, even if you stay up all night, you have to give me an evaluation report by tomorrow morning. Having said that, Wang Ji yawned. This day had been exhausting especially during the afternoon. I'm heading home. What about you, appraiser Gao? After leaving his instructions, Wang Ji ignored Lin Jin and turned to Gao Jiang instead. While Gao Jiang was his subordinate, this was the Gu family's young master, someone deserving of his regard. I'm heading back too. I have an important dinner today that I can't miss, Gao Jiang answered. Without care for Lin Jin, both men simply left. Lin Jin glanced at the beast eggs over there and approached them. 
he was no fool. Wang Ji and Gao Jiang were clearly in cahoots with each other, coming up with excuses to leave. And it only took a little brainpower to figure out that something must be wrong here. Nine of the unappraised were placed together while the other two appraised eggs were placed aside. The two readied evaluation reports were placed there as well. Lin Jin could easily tell. Of a total of eleven eggs, two were appraised, while they either ran out of time for the remaining nine, or they couldn't evaluate them at all. When the client takes a look at the name signed on the evaluation reports, the blame would simply be pushed to him. Those imbeciles. Did they think I'm still the old Lin Jin? Lin Jin smirked. The previous Lin Jin would never be able to evaluate these eggs and it was inevitable he would become the scapegoat. However, the new Lin Jin had the Museum of Deadly Beasts. In this world ruled by pet beasts, he could screw the heavens. Lin Jin was currently alone in the vast hall. It was quiet. He walked over and observed a beast egg. Truth be told, other than it being an egg, there was nothing else he could tell. But with one slight touch, the museum was immediately triggered. Mutated eggs. Record of collection, 1 out of 10. Outside the hall, Wang Ji was assigning an apprentice with a task. Go and prepare some gifts. They must be calligraphy and paintings. Put them in the hall. These will be presents for stewards Wa, so they must be perfect. The apprentice accepted the task and went on his way. Wang Ji was aware that the city lord's task was poorly done, that completing only two evaluations was deplorable so he had to throw in some gifts. At least Suo went on could help him put in a few good words with the city lord. Though was worldly wisdom and an experienced man like Wang Ji naturally knew such rules. After that, he turned to the appraisal hall and smirked before striding away. Little did he know, Lin Jin was currently exhilarated. Mutated eggs, recorded numbers. One, no doubt, to the Museum of Deadly Beasts, this was considered a new category. Lin Jin's excitement stemmed from knowing that the museum often provided rewards for new records. Just like the first time he recorded a hundred beasts, the museum awarded him the wild beast deterrence skill. This allowed him to tame every pet beast under level 3 unless the creature had unique abilities. Lin Jin had tried and tested the skill so many times, with each time being a success. It had been a great help with his image. As for the records of rare beasts, for example, the rock lizard with a golden dragon bloodline, the cockerel, Goldie, with a golden crow bloodline, as well as the ink monster, having exceeded ten records, he was awarded the Beast Energy Formation, Part 1. It was a specialized skill for pet beasts to cultivate the first stage of the Beast Energy Formation. Its effectiveness was evident when Xiao Hua had scratched Lu Yunha's male lion three times today until the beast cried. If he recorded more rare beasts, the museum would most probably award him with the subsequent parts. Once Xiao Hua completes his cultivation, he'd definitely grow more formidable. Also, Lin Ji knew that one of Xiao Hua's next evolution methods was to cultivate the beast energy formation up to level 6. Then, he could evolve into a level 4. Even if his potential rate was insufficient, a breakthrough was achievable. This was the best part of the beast energy formation skill. At present, this skill was the best one known to mankind. If Lin Jin were to release this knowledge to the world, he might start a revolution. With these, it was evident how incredible the museum's rewards were. Now that a new, mutated egg category had appeared, if Lin Jin recorded ten of them, he could trigger a new kind of reward. How could Lin Jin not be thrilled or excited? He was dying of anticipation. He touched the first mutated egg and immediately the museum materialized with a sample specimen and stone tablet. After a careful look, Lin Jin knew it was something remarkable. Mutated Egg Level 1 Gold Attribute Can be hatched into a wind-slashing mantis. The three hatching methods are By nourishing it, there is a chance to raise the creature's initial level. The two methods are 
The five blood pact formation methods are. Lin Jin read through each of them. The contents were extremely plentiful. Without having to write all of them, just picking one out of these ten combinations was enough to be deemed as a perfect evaluation. Without wasting time, Lin Jin took a brush and pen to begin writing down the contents. After he finished, Lin Jin placed his seal on it and moved on to touch the next mutated egg. Chapter 36 A new reward you are listening at NovelFull.audio Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation This second egg was the largest among them all. It was half as tall as a human. Lin Jin was curious just what would come out of this massive egg. Extending his hand, the Museum of Deadly Beast instantly recorded the second mutated egg. Mutated Egg Level 2 Fire Attribute Can be hatched into a fire-scale Tyrannosaurus. The two hatching methods are By nourishing it, there is a chance to raise the creature's initial level up to level 3. The three methods are The five blood-packed formation methods are Lin Jin couldn't begin to describe his astonishment as he read line by line. Now this is a pet beast. The best part of this museum was that it could even show the appearance of a creature before the egg hatched. Thus, Lin Jin was now looking at a one-dot-foot-dot-tall dinosaur covered in fiery scales in amazement. If this creature was well taken care of, it would be a level 3 upon hatching. Although the blood-packed formation would then be troublesome, requiring a complex process and rare materials, being born a level 3 was amazing enough. Besides this, the dinosaur's potential rate was at 5. And what did that mean? It meant that, if things went well, the creature could be promoted up to level 5. Level 3 pet beasts were already precious in Maple City so even brainless fools could tell just how terrifying a level 5 pet beast would be. Moreover, this dinosaur had the bloodline of a flame dragon, giving it bigger merit. Truth be told, it was impossible for Lin Jin not to waver when encountering a pet beast of this level and potential. Forget Xiaohua, even the other pet beasts Lin Jin had recorded thus far couldn't compete with this fire-scale Tyrannosaurus. If only he could tame and sign a blood pact with this beast. But Lin Jin was only just thinking about it. Putting aside the fact that this egg didn't belong to him, the harsh nourish and hatching requirements were enough to make him stay away. After a brief calculation, it would take at least a thousand spirit stones to hatch this egg. And not a thousand of low.grade spirit stones, they had to be at least medium.grade. Lin Jin held up his fingers and calculated. With his current salary, it would take him a hundred years to earn that much without eating or drinking. And that was only the price of making it hatch. The requirement for forming a blood pact and level promotion was a black hole. He had better get working on the evaluation report instead. Lin Jin completed the report. Of course, he filtered the contents and wrote only the most average information. After that, he moved on to the next one. His speed was so much quicker than Wang Ji and Gao Jiang. Rank 1 Poison Cloud Python Of both earth and wood attributes. It's very rare but a pity its potential is only average. Level 1 Golden Toucan Gold Attribute It's average, but it can fly. That's good. Level 2 Leather Velociraptor This is great, it's fast. But its unique characteristic is quite amusing. It has leather skin. Is it supposed to attack by waiting for something to bite it? Level 1 Black Armor Scorpion Level 1 Black Lizard Lin Jin kept evaluating, kept writing, and soon, the mutated eggs recorded in the museum had reached number 10. Just 10, golden rays of light shone down on the museum as clouds hovered around. There was a vague lightning flash and thunder clapped. Then, a one-dot-leveled wooden spiral staircase appeared that led to the second floor. When the mist dispersed, a door appeared on this second floor. Out of reflex, Lin Jin moved up the stairs and came to the door on this new floor. 
This floor was spacious but everything else was still clouded because only ten mutated eggs were recorded. Thus, only the door was shown. This door was made of metal with complex patterns on it. Lin Jin got nervous as he feared what would be on the other side of this door. But after a thought, thinking that the museum was his and it shouldn't be dangerous, Lin Jin decided to push the door open. The door opened to reveal a room. This room was huge and empty. Housing two floors, there were a total of twenty wooden doors on either side on the first floor. On every door, was a number, from one to twenty. Lin Jin had no idea what this place was for. He presumed that the museum would reward him just like before, but now, it had given him this room instead. However, Lin Jin soon noticed a clue. Ever since entering this room, he felt his body materialize. Everywhere he touched felt real. This is odd. Lin Jin was on the second floor of this room. He looked around and then found a wooden sign hanging behind the door. Going over, he reached out and took the wooden sign that read, Curator. There were rows of tiny words on the back. Wonders of the world causes the universe to change. Capable and eccentric guests will be welcomed if fate decides it. Beast Visiting Hall Lin Jin was baffled. Just then, he felt a sting on his finger and Lin Jin let go of the wooden sign, allowing it to fall to the ground. A glance at his finger indicated he had been bitten by something and it was now bleeding. Looking dark, Lin Jin was mad at the wooden sign for biting him. Just then, he vaguely heard someone call out to him. Lin Jin immediately turned and left the room. At that instant, Lin Jin didn't realize that his blood had seeped into the wooden sign on the floor. Simultaneously, three wooden doors below glowed with peculiar lights. The instant he got out, the image before his eyes blurred and he was back at the association's evaluation hall. Standing before him was an apprentice searching high and low. Appraiser Lin. Appraiser Lin. Lin Jin coughed. I'm here. The apprentice was startled. He turned around, looking annoyed. Appraiser Lin, where did you run off to just now? I couldn't find you. There was a hint of blame in his tone. Since the apprentice was Wang Ji's subordinate, Lin Jin couldn't be bothered and asked apathetically, what did you need me for? The apprentice answered, Chief told me to take the night shift and prepare some gifts for tomorrow. Also to see if appraiser Lin needed anything. The last sentence was obviously said out of courtesy, but Lin Jin didn't hold back. I do. Beast appraisal is an exhausting task. Bring me some wine and dishes. I haven't had dinner yet. The apprentice cursed his misbehaving mouth. He had no choice but to prepare them. There is dinner. But you can continue dreaming about the wine. Even if I brought it, would you dare to drink it? After the apprentice left, Lin Jin found a pile of gifts on the table, including some calligraphy and paintings. It must have been brought over by the apprentice. That's weird. Didn't he see me just now? Lin Jin felt that it was odd. Because it was his mind that entered the museum, not his body. So how could the apprentice not notice him sitting there? Unless. Lin Jin's heart suddenly thumped as he recalled how realistic it had felt inside the room and how the apprentice didn't see him just now. Unless my body really went inside. Lin Jin was perturbed. That visitation hall was probably the museum's new reward, but what exactly was its use, Lin Jin hadn't figured out yet. Furthermore, it was even stranger that his physical body could enter the place. Chapter 37 The Mysterious Visitation Hall You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation The apprentice reluctantly served some dishes before leaving. Lin Jin was too hungry to care about the food being cold. He called Xiao Hua over and had him use embers to heat up the soup in a metal pot and just ate the other dishes cold. As he ate, Lin Jin recorded the remaining mutated eggs into the museum then flipped through Wang Ji and Gao Zhang's evaluation report. 
he shook his head. What is all this? Lin Jin put both evaluation reports back. While both reports were beautifully written, the contents were unsightly. Of course, Lin Jin had his reasons for saying so. Although the two reports were generally an appraisal of the beast species inside the mutated eggs, they were vaguely written. To put it bluntly, they were just playing with words without even stating the creature's species, much less its bloodline. Not only was there not confirmation, but this evaluation report even listed out several possibilities, saying it was 60% an insect.type beast, while 40% a bird.type beast. They even provided a bunch of evidence to support their hypothesis. Anyway, no reader could tell specifically what the eggs were, only getting a vague idea. Compared to Lin Jin's clearly written reports, these two were poorly done. After brief contemplation, Lin Jin wrote two more reports for these two eggs. Whether or not they would be used, Lin Jin couldn't care less. While Lin Jin was eating and writing the reports, unbeknownst to him, changes had begun to occur inside that strange room in the museum. Of the three glowing wooden doors, the door labeled number five was slowly being pushed open. Ten minutes earlier. With the Palace of Jade Dragon City, inside Jade Dragon Kingdom, the fourth princess, He Ching was sitting on the rooftop with her tiny feet kicking over the edge as she watched the dazzling lights outside the palace walls, yearning for Jade Dragon City. Beside her was her pet beast, a tetra-dot-winged butterfly dragon. As a daughter of royalty, He Ching had a noble status, never having to worry about anything in life. Even her pet beast was meticulously picked out for her by the royal beast appraiser. The tetra-dot-winged butterfly dragon had wings like a butterfly, a lizard's body, and a hidden bloodline. It was born as a level 2 with great potential. And the rarer the species, the longer time was required for the beast to stay with its owner so they could share their spiritual energies for the beast to gain an opportunity at evolution. According to the royal beast appraiser, the tetra-dot-winged butterfly dragon needed at least five more years before it could evolve. He Ching was getting impatient because as per the royal family's requirements, for a royal descendant to set up their living quarters outside, to be able to live alone, their pet beasts had to at least be at level 3. I really want to escape this palace. Take a walk outside. Experience this exciting world, He Ching mumbled. I heard how there are many delicious treats outside, strange people, and peculiar events. What do you think, Xiao Dai? She turned to her pet beast. Her side profile presented exquisite features as if they were painted by a master. Despite her young age, the girl was a rare beauty. Having no ability to speak, her pet beast stayed quiet. What? Did you say you enjoy staying in the palace? He Ching began talking to herself. What's so good about this awful place? We've been here for tens of years, aren't you bored? If I could leave the palace, I must try delicious food, travel across the lands, and experience interesting events. Below the roof was several imperial guards looking helpless. Clearly, this wasn't the princess's first time pulling such a stunt. A handmaiden called out, Seventh Princess, it's very late now. Please come back down and be careful. TSK. I'm all too familiar with this roof so how could I fall? The princess looked smug. Just then, she noticed glowing lights blinking around her tetra-dot-wing butterfly dragon, and suddenly, a crack in space opened behind the creature, sucking in the princess and her pet beast. The entire process happened without a sound so none of the guards or servants below noticed. The brief sense of weightlessness made He Ching fearful. Thankfully she soon fell to the ground. In this endlessly dark place, standing right before her was a door. Hanging on this door was a wooden sign, carved with the words, Visitor Number 5. Even with her pet beast by her side, He Ching couldn't help but feel frightened. Shocked and confused, the princess began to tear up. After calming herself down, he Ching called her pet beast closer as she braced herself, taking down the wooden sign and slowly pushing the wooden door open. Behind it was a hall. Although it was equally strange, 
there was no possibility of monsters appearing from the darkness in this room so he Qing entered it. Then, the wooden door closed. Is anyone there? He Qing held her hands to her chest defensively while her pet beast flew beside her. There was no response. Looking around, she noticed two rows of wooden doors in the room after coming out of her number five door. Each door had its own number. Once she regained her composure, He Qing wondered if she had been abducted. As a daughter of royalty, many bad guys must be out to get her, just like how she read in those novels she secretly stashed away. At the thought of this, her calmed heart was instantly riled up again. Xiao Dai, if the bad guys show up later, you have to protect me. Dot He Qing had just spoken when door number seven across was pushed open. A tall man dressed completely in black entered the room. He Qing immediately backed away, tensing up, looking cautious. With his razor dot sharp gaze, the black dot clothed man glanced at He Qing and the latter froze up as if she was thrown into an ice pit. Even her tetra dot winged butterfly lizard was trembling. Sitting on the man's shoulder was a crow. This crow had eyes like two blood dot red rubies. What is this place? The man asked. In his eyes, He Qing seemed excessively weak where both she and her pet beast were not worth his attention. Hence, it was impossible that this lass abducted him here. Black Crow This man was an elite assassin with the blood of many lives on his hands. With his level 4 Black Falcon pet beast, the man could single-dot-handedly destroy a small country. There was the power of a level 4 beast. After all, some countries did not even have a level 4 beast to protect them. The crow on his shoulder was a black falcon. Before he was pulled into the crack by a fearsome power, Black Crow was exploring an ancient immortal's cave with his comrades. It was a cave where immortals resided before the Earth's spirit energy was exhausted. One could imagine how valuable it was. The interior of that cave had been huge. While it had lost the support of spiritual energy, rendering the traps and restrictive mechanisms of the cave ineffective, it was still unusually dangerous. The group had spent several days only to explore a few stone rooms, and that wasn't even one dot tenth of the place. When he was resting, a crack suddenly appeared behind him, and then Black Crow was pulled into it by an invisible force. This incident startled him. Exactly what was this power that even his level 4 pet beast couldn't counter? Hence, he pushed the wooden door open and came in. Although he was apprehensive and confused as well, Black Crow never feared danger. This was the key personality that brought him this far. In the past, countless enemies stronger than him had all died in his hands. I don't care who they are. But those who toy with me this way have to bear consequences, said Black Crow as he surveyed the environment. Chapter 38 Three visitors you are listening at novel full dot audio. Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless Fantasy Translation Soon, Black Crow realized that he could only remain on this floor. He couldn't open the other doors, nor ascend the second floor. There was an invisible force field around the spiral staircase, making him unable to get close. He Qing was still on her guard because Black Crow was too intimidating. But speaking of which, besides fear, she actually felt a little excited because she was sure this wasn't Jade Dragon Kingdom's palace. Her wish had finally come true. She had left the cage that was the palace and appeared in the world outside. Although this situation was strange, He Qing knew she was on her own now. He Qing, you can do this. He Qing clenched her tiny fists, rooting for herself. When she saw the dangerous man looking at her again, He Qing quickly said, I don't know where this place is either. Just like you, I came from door number five. I think that whoever it is that had the power to bring us here must have a purpose. He's probably observing us from somewhere right now. The law of self.protection, to divert the other's attention. After all, He Qing was royalty and the seventh princess of Jade Dragon Kingdom. Despite her wild and unruly temperament, she was much more intelligent compared to those of her age. 
she was always number one in strategy courses with her royal peers. She had calmly analyzed the situation earlier, deciding that her biggest threat was not the mysterious owner of this place, but the black dot clothed man in front of her. Diverting his attention would be the smartest thing to do. And sure enough, Black Crow's expression changed slightly. He held back his intention of torturing the girl for answers and backed up to the wall to wait in silence. Brilliant choice, he Chin mused. In this unknown situation, conserving energy and calm observation was the best strategy. The two didn't converse but maintain a purposeful distance instead. They had no idea what they were waiting for but that was all they could do. A brief moment later, there was activity in the room. The only metal door on the second floor clicked before it was pushed open by someone. He Ching and Black Crow's attention were immediately drawn to this seemingly powerful enemy. Lin Jin was finally done with his work. In fact, he didn't spend much time on it because the appraisal process was too easy. It was only the writing that took time. BL.net he finished it in 30 minutes. Once everything was in place, he entered the museum's visitation hall again. Lin Jin wanted to know what this place was for. But upon entering this time, he was shocked. There were people on the first floor. His first reaction was to retreat. This was spooky. How could there be people inside the Museum of Deadly Beasts? It was impossible. However, Lin Jin stopped immediately after taking one step back. He suddenly recalled the words written on the back of the curator's wooden sign. Wonders of the world causes the universe to change. Capable and eccentric guests will be welcomed if fate decides it. Guests will be welcomed if fate decided it. This was the Beast Visitation Hall. So did that mean these people were? Guests. Lin Jin paused and composed himself before looking carefully at the people downstairs. If these people were guests, then he was the host. Since this was his territory, why should he be afraid? Lin Jin thought his deduction made sense. Moreover, this visitation hall was one of the museum's rewards so there must be a unique point even if Lin Jin felt it was only so. so. But he would decide later. He observed the people below and the people below observed him. No one spoke and the hall fell into pin.drop silence. He Qin looked confused. Being young and having a straightforward personality, her curiosity was killing her so He Qin was the first to break this silence, were you the one who kidnapped us? This was a question Black Crow wanted to know as well. Kidnapped. Wheels began to turn in Lin Jin's mind. Just now, he had briefly pondered the situation. Look, either these people came here on their own, or they were sent here instead. As for the possibility of them belonging to the museum, that's at no dot. Upon hearing the young girl, Lin Jin realized that they were sent here. To rephrase that, they weren't sent here by him, but by the museum. But no matter if they came here actively or passively, since they're here, according to the museum, these people were his guests. As the host, Lin Jin should naturally receive his guests. Hence, after consideration, Lin Jin coughed and said, Welcome, my three guests. I'm polite, aren't I? Yet, He Ching and Black Crow's expressions immediately changed at Lin Jin's words. Because on this first floor, there was only the two of them with their pet beasts. Where was this third person? Black Crow immediately thought of something while He Ching was clearly frightened. She looked around then said, You're really weird. There are clearly only two of us but you mentioned welcoming three. What does that mean? Also, what's that on your face? Why does it look like a cloud of black haze? Lin Jin raised an eyebrow, musing, aren't you the weird one? There are clearly three of you down there, and there's nothing on my face. At this thought, Lin Jin touched his own face. Sure enough, there was nothing. But from the looks of the girl's reaction, she didn't seem to be fooling around. Lin Jin then realized that besides the uniquely dressed girl and that black dot clothed man who was acting cool, 
the third person had been standing at a further distance with a pet beast lying on his shoulders. It was a chameleon no matter how you looked at it. Also, when Lin Jin had said three guests, the person with the biggest reaction and looked the most baffled was this third person. It was as if someone had realized his secret. Perhaps it was to answer Lin Jin's questions, three rays of light abruptly shot out from the three pet beasts below, and right before Lin Jin's eyes, three specimen samples appeared. It was a detailed evaluation result of the three pet beasts. Obviously, when pet beasts enter the museum, without having to touch them, the museum could simply record them. No one could hide from it. However, the three people below seemed oblivious to this phenomenon. Hence, Lin Jin had reason to believe that as guests, these people had very limited authority in the museum. As someone who had transmigrated here, Lin Jin's acceptance and comprehension ability definitely surpassed the residents of this world. For example, he understood this visitor limitation issue well. Based on the information so far, visitors couldn't see the phenomenons of the museum, and according to the girl, there was a black haze on Lin Jin's face. Meaning to say, they couldn't see his appearance. Lin Jin chuckled. That means, no matter if he was shocked or happy, no one could tell. Back to the information of these three newly recorded pet beasts, TSK TSK. Amazing. Superb. Not one of them was average. They were all rare species with hidden bloodlines. Just then, Lin Jin's heart wavered and he came up with an idea. Lowering his voice, he began to speak. Tetra.Winged Butterfly Dragon. Although it's only a level 2, it has potential is great. If things go smoothly in a few years, it could be promoted to level 5 or level 6 even. But for the current stage, it is the weakest pet beast amount the 3. As for the Black Falcon, it's quite powerful. It is currently a level 4, being the strongest among the 3. But it's a pity its potential rate is lower than the Butterfly Dragon. And the Chameleon. A level 3. It's average, I'd say. But its unique ability is quite amazing. Not only can it make itself and its surroundings invisible, but it can also make its owner invisible too. Since he was aware he had the absolute upper dot hand, Lin Jin stopped worrying. By now, he more or less understood the usage of this visitation hall. At least one of it was to help him increase the records of rare creatures. Of course, this wasn't the only use of this visitation hall either. Lin Jin had deliberately read out the evaluation results of the three beasts to establish authority. Just by looking at their pet beasts, he knew these three guests were no ordinary people. Chapter 39 Call me, curator, you are listening at novelfull.audio Translator Endless Fantasy Translation Editor Endless fantasy translation These three people were either dignitaries or expert killers. Compared to them, Lin Jin was no doubt inferior in every aspect, but now, they were in his museum, cautious, frightened, and especially after they heard him casually elaborating information on the pet beasts, they looked as if they had seen a ghost. Looking at the twenty doors below, Lin Jin knew that since the museum opened this visitation hall, there would at least be 20 people invited from all around the world to be his guests. If every time these guests came with parts of rare beasts like fur, blood samples, or others, the rare beast record in the museum would increase. Previously when 10 rare beasts were recorded, the museum awarded Lin Jin with Beast Energy Formation, Part 1. After that, Lin Jin found out that his next achievement for Part 2 required at least 50 rare beasts recorded. Weak and on his own, it would take Lin Jin forever to record 50 rare beasts especially when he's trapped in such a small place like Maple City. Up till now, he had only recorded less than 20 rare beasts. But with the visitation hall, things would now be different. These people might have come from different parts of the country, or even overseas maybe. The number of rare beasts they've encountered must have far exceeded his. Lin Jin would first intimidate them before giving them some perks. With this, even royalty or world experts would have to yield to him. At this pleasing thought, 
Lin Jin put on a bright smile. Realizing that his face was being covered up by the museum, Lin Jin began grinning without reserve. After he voiced out the pet beast's evaluations, He Qin, Black Crow, and the currently invisible third person were dumbstruck. It was normal for He Qin because whatever she was feeling would be reflected in her expression. But Black Crow was different. He was a veteran assassin who could eliminate a country with a straight face. Yet, at this moment, he couldn't conceal his shock. The reason was that he had placed a unique blessing on his Black Falcon. Even with specialized beast appraisal techniques, no one could tell the true form of his Black Falcon, much less with a naked eye. Yet, the guy on the second floor had easily described his Black Falcon, and this gave Black Crow a feeling of being stripped naked in public. It was a terribly uncomfortable feeling. When he was uncomfortable, he would get annoyed. And when he was annoyed, he would kill. Enough with the mystery act. I don't care who you are and you don't know who you're messing with. But don't worry, I'll make you understand the consequences of offending someone you should have never provoked, Black Crow threatened. He immediately cast a spell and his Black Falcon rose from his shoulder. Dark energy surrounded its body, gathering into a huge black silhouette. In an instant, the strength of a rank 4 Black Falcon burst forth. Darkness. This was the Black Falcon's attribute. It was evident how rare this attribute was and how terrifying its combat strength could be. Black Crow had absolute faith in his pet beast. This confidence stemmed from countless battle experiences and its identity as a rank 4 beast with a hidden bloodline that gave it enough to destroy a country. Kill him. Black Crow pointed to Lin Jin on the second floor and the Black Falcon cried out, swooping at its target like a grim reaper. He Qin squatted down, holding her head in fright. No matter how intelligent she was, she was still scared when encountering a rank 4 beast. Lin Jin was startled as well. While he had the first level of wild beast deterrence, it was only effective against level 3 and below. He couldn't do anything to a level 4. Hence, he too was nervous. Yet, at that moment, the wooden sign in his hand that read Curator unleashed a wave of intimidation. This wave swept over and the Black Falcon could be seen abruptly stopping as if it was struck by thunder, then it fell to the ground, kneeling before Lin Jin. The savage expression on Black Crow's face froze. He was still pointing at the second floor but this immense shock and the mental blow made him forget how to think. What had happened? His Black Falcon was an arrogant creature. Even as his owner, Black Crow had to be polite to him and treat him as an equal. If his tone was slightly heavier, the Black Falcon would get angry, making Black Crow wonder if he was the pet instead. But now, this egoistic Black Falcon was kneeling on the ground like a humble human. Comprehension began to return into his blank mind together with a wave of fear. A layer of sweat was now covering Black Crow's forehead. Lin Jin was breaking out in cold sweat as well. A level 4 beast was indeed horrifying. Had it been someone else with lesser courage than him, they might have fallen to the floor in fright. But thankfully the tables have turned and the curator's sign overwhelmed this black falcon. Lin Jin clenched the sign tighter, breathing a sigh of relief. Then, he pressed his voice down to ask Black Crow, what are you doing? His tone was mingled with sarcasm and fury. I, I. Black Crow's hands were trembling as he stammered. Boasting the fact that his pet beast was level 4 and the man himself was famous as a grim reaper, humans like him knew no fear because of insolence. Only those higher above knew how measly their own existence was, and would understand enough to show respect. Black Crow finally realized that he had provoked the wrong person. That man on the second floor was much stronger than he was. Immediately, his fury, pride, and hostility crumbled away as if he was splashed by a pail of cold water. He must have been mad. He should have known how extraordinary the owner of this place was to be able to bring him here, but Black Crow was foolish enough to think he could challenge said man with his Black Falcon. In hindsight, that had been a reckless idea. Black Crow didn't want to die. 
He was an assassin who reaped many lives without batting an eyelid yet he feared death very much. Appeasing the host's fury was now his first priority. Without resistance, after behaving so high and mighty, Black Crow simply fell to the ground on his knees and came up with an excuse that even he would be skeptical of. I was only joking. Don't take me seriously. Pfft. He Chin couldn't resist snorting a laugh. Lin Jin wouldn't actually do anything to him because he didn't have the means to attack or bind his guests after all. He merely relied on the curator's sign in his hand to suppress his guests' pet beasts. Lin Jin had a feeling that this curator's sign must be equipped with a mid-level wild beast deterrence skill. All right. I do not hope to see you next time. Lin Jin waved his hand. As if he had received amnesty, Black Crow stood up again with his arrogance and edge now gone without a trace. The Black Falcon reverted back into the form of a raven and perched onto Black Crow's shoulder obediently. Let's talk about serious business. Welcome, my three guests, to the Museum of Deadly Beasts. Here, you can inquire anything about pet beasts, and remember, only about pet beasts. You can ask anything and I can answer you. But of course, no answer is free. With each question, you have to provide me with the fur or blood sample from a rare beast. Now, you may begin your queries, Lin Jin spoke gravely. Silence. Lin Jin didn't rush them but waited quietly. Blinking her big round eyes, He Qin glanced around before apprehensively raising her hand. What would you like to ask? Lin Jin looked at her. He Qin pointed to her pet beast and then plucked a strand of fur from it. May I ask how I could evolve my pet beast within the shortest time frame? This question posed no difficulty for Lin Jin. There were more than four methods to help this tetra-winged butterfly dragon evolve. Lin Jin chose the easiest method, penned it down, and tossed it to her. He Qin picked up the paper, read it through, and was immediately excited. She could obviously tell how much this evaluation report was worth. Standing nearby, the curious black crow wanted to see the contents of this evaluation report as well so he craned his neck. Unfortunately, he could see anything, but he wasn't blind to the young girl's excitement. The evaluation report must have provided her a genuine evolution method. Besides fear, curiosity now blossomed in Black Crow's heart. I have another question. He Qin pondered before removing the necklace around her fair neck. Hanging on this necklace was a rainbow dot-colored scale. Evidently, this scale came from a rare beast. She tossed it to Lin Jin and the latter assumed she wanted to ask about this scale. But who knew that He Qing had asked a different question instead? Sir, can you tell me? Who are you? This question was a little against the rules. Lin Jin wasn't a pet beast. But after serious consideration, he answered, You can call me Curator. Dot. Chapter 40 Excited visitors you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Lin Jin knew he couldn't reveal his real name. With his current insignificant status, exposing his identity would no doubt bring calamity upon himself. But he needed a form of address too. When looking at the curator's sign in his hand, Lin Jin decided that from now on in the visitation hall, he would be known as the curator. The curator of the Museum of Deadly Beasts. He Qin nodded and retreated with satisfaction. Lin Jin tossed the rainbow scale up and it turned into a ray of light before being recorded in the museum. Rift Beast, Symphony Jade Dragon. Recorded Rift Beasts one-tenth. As a humongous specimen appeared, Lin Jin was gaping. No doubt the size of this massive creature was the largest pet beast Lin Jin had ever seen. Although it was floating in the air, its estimated height was at least three feet tall with the width of two adults' arm lengths. The creature was covered in colorful scales and had two horns on its head, for claws on each limb. Lin Jin turned to the tablet's description. This creature was born as a level 3 and its potential growth was up to level 6. Lin Jin was getting emotional. This world had too many rare creatures in different categories. 
There were even more powerful pet beasts and could all be recorded in the museum. When that time came, Lin Jin would definitely receive more rewards. Just like this evaluation result from the museum, this Symphony Jade Dragon had been classified as a Rift Beast. Lin Jin had no idea was a Rift Beast represented but no doubt, it was more precious than rare beasts and mutated eggs. If he could meet the reward standards, God knows what delightful achievement could he get. At this thought, Lin Jin rubbed his hands together in glee. Composing himself, Lin Jin glanced at the three people. He was now sure that due to visitor limitations, his guests couldn't see images and descriptions of the recorded beasts. Otherwise, how could they look so calm with a gigantic specimen floating on air? With a wave, Lin Jin recorded the specimen into the museum and asked, what about the others? Do you have something you want to ask? Black Crow was still hesitating while out of thin air, a person suddenly appeared. This person was wearing a peculiar scaled armor, shielding his body completely while a chameleon rested on his shoulders. Black Crow's pupils immediately dilated at the sight of him. So it was him. The Phantom Thief, Jiang Ziki. Clearly, Black Crow had heard of this man before. Jiang Ziki stepped up and bowed before speaking respectfully, Curator, I'd like to ask if you know how to cure a pet beast's grave illness. Lin Jin nodded. If you can provide me the fur, scale, or blood sample of said pet beast, I can answer this question for you. He could see Jiang Ziki's body shudder before the latter said, I didn't bring it today. May I ask when can I return again so I could seek your guidance? Um. Lin Jin was just worrying about the answer when he felt the curator's sign vibrate. Looking down, he saw another row of words. Visitation hall opened once every seven days. Visitors can enter with their visitation signs. There really is an answer. Lin Jin read out this new description and Jiang Ziki retreated with satisfaction. When the guests entered, hanging on their doors was a wooden number sign. His was number six. He Ching was holding number five while Black Crow held number seven. Any other questions? Lin Jin wanted to record more rare species so he asked kindly. Black Crow was hesitant but finally couldn't contain himself. After discussing it with the Black Falcon, he plucked out a feather and stepped up, asking respectfully, Curator, Sir, is there any way to help my Black Falcon evolve? It was obvious how much Black Crow desired to evolve his Black Falcon. He knew better than anyone else how terrifying a high leveling pet beast could be. The man had many enemies. While his level 4 pet beast was enough to overpower most of his opponents, the strongest pet beasts in this world were not only level 4. If there was an opportunity to promote the Black Falcon to level 5, Black Crow felt excited just thinking about how glorious it would be. Only, in the past few years, Black Crow had sought guidance from experts and tried many methods but he couldn't find a way to help his pet beast level up. This had now become his greatest wish. This curator was oh.so powerful and could easily intimidate his Black Falcon. Perhaps the man could truly provide him with answers. Lin Jin had read through the Black Falcon's description. Truthfully speaking, there were several methods to evolve the creature but they were all incredibly difficult. After all, the Black Falcon's potential was low and it was already a level 4. Wanting to improve a near-perfect creature was harder than evolving lower-leveled pet beasts. Although Lin Jin had the answers, he didn't give them. While he said he wouldn't punish the man for being impertinent, that didn't mean Lin Jin wouldn't hold a grudge. So with a fling of his sleeve, Lin Jin said icily, Guest number 7, you've attempted an assault in the museum today. While it's your first offense and I can excuse a punishment, but I'll have to incur a small penalty nonetheless. I can give you the evolution method for this black falcon but you will have to wait until the next time. Also, you have to bring me samples of at least 20 rare beasts, otherwise, don't think about obtaining this method. Lin Jin knew how scarce rare beasts were. And to have the man collect 50 in a week was too difficult a task so 20 should be fine. By then, 
he'd be closer to getting 50 rare beasts recorded. After all, only at 50 recorded rare beasts would the museum award him with part 2 of the beast energy formation. As for how powerful this skill was, Lin Jin knew better than anyone after Xiao Hua had cultivated it. Moreover, among the methods to evolve Xiao Hua, if Lin Jin intended to promote the little guy with perfect evolution again, he needed the remaining beast energy formation parts. Remember, the samples mustn't be a repeat or they won't be counted, Lin Jin added. Black Crow immediately registered it in his mind. While this was a little troublesome, Black Crow knew that his life was spared today so he wouldn't dare to ask for more. Also, this mysterious and almighty curator had said that there was a way to evolve the Black Falcon. He might just be speaking the truth. His task was just to collect samples of rare beasts and wait for another seven days. That wouldn't be a problem. He had been waiting for so many years, so water another seven days. It was clear that he could only obtain so much from this first visit. A total of four rare beasts were recorded which included a rift beast in the mix. This was already good enough. Having spent quite some time here, Lin Jin now planned to leave. The museum is closing. Dear guests, please return through the wooden doors. After Lin Jin had spoken, the three guests quickly left through their own doors, holding on to their thoughts. Black Crow opened the door and sure enough, there was a crack in the empty space. He stepped through it without hesitation and the next moment, he returned to where he came from, the ancient immortals cave he and his comrades had found. His surroundings were dark and the rift behind him had disappeared. Black Crow stood there for the longest time, no one knew what he was thinking. Just then, someone came over from a tunnel beside him. This person had long robes covering his face, boils all over his arms. There was a stench on him, and following beside him was a large green centipede. This centipede was taller than a man when it stood up, ghastly to look at. Black Crow, where did you run off to? Why couldn't we find you anywhere? This man immediately asked when he found Black Crow. Black Crow turned, regaining his domineering aura. Poison centipede, do I have to report to you wherever I go? How's the excavation of this immortal's cave coming along? The man named Poison Centipede wasn't bothered by Black Crow's tone. After all, Black Crow was the strongest of the group. It's not going so well. Rodent encountered some resistance and almost died down there. Poison Centipede grinned maliciously. Even the lives of his comrades were nothing to him. This was how their group worked. They only gathered for the sake of profit. Black Crow was now eyeing that large green centipede, suddenly saying, This centipede of yours is a rare beast, isn't it? Quick, give me a drop of its blood. In some secret forest, the man nicknamed Phantom Thief, Jiang Ziki was looking at the tiny mountain that was a massive lizard in deep sleep muttered to himself, For the sake of rescuing you, I need to take one of your scales. Let's hope that the curator can create a miracle. Inside the Palace of Jade Dragon Kingdom. By now, dawn was breaking. However, the palace had fallen into chaos because their seventh princess suddenly went missing without a trace. The Imperial Guards were going crazy with anxiousness. Just then, a guard shouted, We found the seventh princess. He Ching chased everyone out of the room with a random excuse, somehow managing to fool them for now. No one asked her about her disappearance for several hours anymore. After all, she had returned safely. At that moment inside her room, He Ching's eyes were sparkling as she jumped up and down with joy. Xiao Dai, not only did we go outside, but we even went to a mysterious place. With this visitation sign, we can head there every seven days. And this is only the beginning. Sooner or later, we can venture to the famous mountains and rivers outside. But before that, I have to help you evolve. When you reach level 3 and can change your shape at will, you can take me outside secretly to play. Just then, someone called out from outside her door, Your Highness, the sixth princess has fainted again. <laughs>